Okay, applications of rational equations. So a few steps whenever we solve applications or think about problem solving or word problems with uh, any kind of math that are useful. First of all, it's really a good way to start solving any kind of math problem by defining your variables. And you can do this in a few different ways. You can write let statements that uh, have the form let x be somebody's age or let t be the time. Uh, you can draw a diagram or draw a picture um, and sometimes it's useful to just put the information into an organized form such as a chart. Once you've done that you want to organize the variable or variables that you've chosen into some sort of equation. And in this course we really want there to only be one variable. Now that we have an equation of one variable, we need to solve that equation. And finally, we want to communicate a solution. And part of the communication process is to write a sentence, make sure you have the correct units, make sure you're using proper English and vocabulary, and make sure that your solution to this actually makes some sense. So if you get an age and it's a negative number, make sure that you have double-checked your work to look for any errors. With all of that in mind, let's take a look at a few examples. Here's the first one. The sum of some number in six times its reciprocal is five. Let's see if we can figure out what the number is. So I'm going to do this using let statements. So my first one is just going to define my variable. And in this case, that's the variable x, and that's going to be the number that I want to go and find. And now I'm going to go to step two and write an equation. So the sum, which is adding up the number x, and six times the reciprocal, and a reciprocal is one over x, all of that is equal to five. And so now I have to go and solve this equation. Solving this equation, and the equation could also look like this. Solving the equation means multiply everything by x. I get x squared plus 6 equals 5x. To solve, I need to make it equal to 0. So subtract 5x on both sides, make it equal to 0, and factor it. This factors to x minus 3 and x minus 2. And so I have some solutions, 3 and 2. The sum of a number and 6 times the reciprocal is 5, and I want to try and find the number, and it looks like I found more than one number, possibly 3 and 2. So let's see if they work. So this is the part before I communicate my solution where I'm just checking, do these things work? If I take 3 and I add 6 times its reciprocal, do I get 5? So grab a calculator, pause the video, and see. Thanks for doing that. You do get 5. What happens with my other number? 2 and 6 times 1 half, well half of 6 is 3 plus 2, that one's a little easier to see, is 5. So this is just a little check that I'm doing before I go on, just to make sure that my solutions are actual reasonable answers. So now I have to state the solution. Well it turns out the solution isn't just one number, so this is a tiny bit of a lie, find the number. Um, so I'm going to state one option is... 3. Another is 2. So one option for my number is 3 and another option for my number is 2. Let's go take a look at another example and walk through these four steps. So in this example it takes Jerry nine hours longer than George to paint a house. Working together they could do the job in 20 hours, paint the whole house. How long would it take them working alone to paint the house? So again set up our variables. I'm gonna say uh, t is the amount of time it takes Jerry to paint this house by himself. And Jerry takes a lot longer than George, so George will take less time to paint the house. In fact, nine hours less, so I'll write a let statement for that. And I use t minus nine. Working together, they could do this job in 20 hours. Okay, so uh, out of the 20 hours, Jerry put some time in, George put some time in, and they do one whole job. So. Uh, this is the one house that's getting painted, or the one job that's getting done. And Jerry does a fraction of the work, and we could add George's fraction of the work together, 
and we would have an equation for the entire job. So a fraction done by Jerry, a fraction done by George would equal one whole thing done. In this case, one whole house painted. So how much of the job does Jerry do? Well, 20 hours elapse for both of these people, and Jerry does his share. So he puts in his time. So maybe four hours. Uh, George, out of the entire thing, puts in t minus 9 hours. So how I got these fractions is in one hour, Jerry would do 1 over t of the entire job because it would take 20 uh, hours of him working with George to complete the whole thing. And George works at a rate of 1 over t minus 9 each hour. So these are the rates at which they work per hour. If I say go and work for 20 hours and go and work for 20 hours and that will complete the job, that's how I'm arranging uh, or, or organizing this original formula. Another way to think about it is these two people are working together. Jerry's going to do, say, uh, 10 hours of work sorry, let's make it uh, 40 hours of work, and so he'd put in his fraction, that's like half the work, and George is going to do his 40 hours working alongside, because they're working at the same time, but this is going to be more than a half, and so a half plus more than a half would be bigger than one. So now my job is to find at what time would it exactly equal one for them to get 20 hours worth of work put in together. Now that I have an equation, I need to go and solve it. Solving this requires multiplying by a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply the first fraction by t times t minus 9, the second one by t times t minus 9, and same with this last one. And I get some cancellations. So I get 20t minus 9 plus 20t equals t times t minus 9. Distributive law. Make it equal to 0. So I'm going to move all of the things on the left to the right-hand side. So I'm actually going to have my 0 over on this side, so t squared, because I want positive t squared. Uh, 20t plus another 20t is 40t moved over, will give me minus 49, and minus 180 moved over will give me 180. Now I need to factor this. It'll be t and t, and I need to come up with these numbers. So two numbers that multiply to negative 180 that add up to negative 49 are minus 4 times minus 45. And so I now get t could be 4 or t could be 45. And so let's check and see if this makes any sense. Uh, let 4 be Jerry's time to paint the house by himself. That would be 4 hours to do it by himself. And then George's time would be 4 minus 9. That would be minus 5 hours to paint the house. And that just doesn't make any sense. So let's not use that one because they actually have to work. So uh, 45. If Jerry took 45 hours to paint the house by himself and 45 minus 9 is 36, George takes 36 hours to paint the house by, by himself, then working together, someone who takes 45 hours, someone who takes 36 hours, obviously together they're going to work much faster than alone, so it'll be better than the 36. In fact, it turns out to be exactly 20 hours that it takes. So now that I've analyzed my solutions, let's write a final answer to this, which is that Jerry would take 45 hours and George would take 36 hours. Okay, let's go take a look at another example.